Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Retro Tech. Today I've got an unboxing for you. So in the past, I've done unboxing videos of Sony PVMs, and it's been about a year, and now I'm going to unbox another PVM. This is a Sony 2030, and again, I have ordered 2030s online before and had some success with them shipping properly and some that were destroyed during shipping. So today, let's take a quick look at the box. You can see the outside of it, how it managed to survive a little bit of its trip from California. And we're going to go ahead and open it. But I do have to warn you, I'm not feeling too great because they pretty much made their own boxes here. It looks like it's a nice big 24x24 24 24 cube, but it's actually 24x24x12s. 24 24 rectangular boxes that were pieced together to make this one. So I'm not sure even what side it shipped up or down or in, you know right side or wrong side because there's no markings on the outside of this box. Now I did try to reach out to this seller and say hey you know I've made quite a few videos on how to pack these things properly would you like any tips? I never heard anything back so hopefully they knew what they were doing and uh, didn't just destroy this monitor. Without wasting any more time let's go ahead now and open the box. Alright, so I'm just going to start by, of course, cutting the tape at the top. We'll see how well this packed. Abundance of bubble wrap inside. Well, so, you can see on the other camera here, it was actually shipped upside down. And that means there was no padding on the bottom of this, oh brother, except for these two priority mailboxes, which, uh, okay, I don't know how really, how much protection that has. Then we've got the foam, or not even foam, these are nice, but there's some bubble wrap around the outside, so. Open it up and I hope for the best. Alright, the button is there. Mm. Wow. So Alright, so that was pretty light on the packing materials, and um, I don't, I haven't powered it on yet, but the tube doesn't feel like it's been collapsed or anything's cracked or been shaken loose. Uh, <laughs> cave, power cable has seen some better days, and look at that mess, Ooh, holy moly. And. Everything else appears to be like it may have survived this trip. Let's just look and see what else we got in here for packing materials. Because it doesn't seem like a whole lot. And it's really not. And it's just a bunch of bigger sized bubble wrap and a bunch of priority mailboxes. So thank goodness this didn't probably get destroyed unless it doesn't turn on. Because I don't really believe this would have met, I don't think this would have met any of the requirements that FedEx has for shipping. Anyway, plenty of bubble wrap. Let's fire it up and see if we can get a picture. Let's go ahead now and run a test, simple power on test. It's plugged in and I've got composite running to it now out of my Super Nintendo. Um, I don't want to push it and try anything else yet. We'll just do a simple composite test, see if anything shows up here on the screen. And look at that. That's a really good sign. Okay, so see, um, I bought this monitor pretty much untested. 
the person who sold it to me set it powered on and that was it. Uh, we've got red, green, and blue colors. Stable screen. Might just need a little bit of adjustment, but yeah, see I've got some, well, let's see. Okay. So we'll see the vertical hold button was just a little bit off. But other than that, um, just a little bit of a pin cushion adjustment on the corners. Definitely needs that. There's a couple more adjustments on the geometry, but overall it looks like it's uh, survived and, and passes the test. Well, sometimes you just get lucky, and I feel like that's the case here. I don't think that this would have been enough packaging to uh, get any kind of coverage from FedEx if it would have been damaged, so I'm thankful that it isn't. I've seen monitors packed a whole lot better than that get damaged a whole lot more on a lot less of a journey. Again, this one came from California, so it came a long way, and FedEx did a surprisingly good job of making sure it didn't get damaged even though it wasn't packed to what I would call high standards. I did make a buy it now offer on eBay on this monitor and I think I paid about $240 to have it shipped to me. But you can see uh, it has a lot of work to do, some calibrations. I don't think any parts are gonna need to be changed. However, I will take an opportunity to make a fresh new video about the 2030 coming up and we'll get this one looking great and have it ready to be used. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell notification so you can catch all my great retro and CRT related videos. And I'll see you next time with some more retro content.